All right, guys, I just wanted to throw up a quick video about uh, all these new cameras. Uh, yeah, I mentioned the ZV-E1, how I like that. That's what I'm shooting on here now. And also, I'm shooting on the Canon EOS R8. And I was going to set up my Sony ZV-E1 and use this as well as a third cam. I didn't think that was necessary. So the ZV-E1 is an amazing camera. The ZV-E10 is an amazing camera. The Canon EOS R8 is an amazing camera. The ZV-E1 is an amazing camera. The A7C2 is an amazing camera. The A7 IV is an amazing camera. The S5 II is an amazing camera. They're all good cameras now. Like, you're not gonna go wrong. If you buy one of these newer cameras, you're not gonna go wrong. The ZV-1 is a great camera. It, it does overheat a little faster than some of the other cameras. But for me, it's never been an issue, right? But the A7C2, not supposed to overheat. So as far as that goes, get the A7C2 if that's what's in your workflow. But for me, I wanted the low light of the ZV-E1, but the Canon EOS R8 is an amazing camera for 1500 bucks. Now the Canon R8 is uh, a good deal. For 1500 bucks, you can't beat the price for full frame, uh, does 60 frames per second out of the box. Just did the firmware update on it. Didn't seem to do really much. It's just a small little update, but I updated anyways. Um, and that's all you need. You don't need a ZV-E1. Uh, the Canon R8 will do just fine. The ZV-E1 will do just fine. The ZV-E10 will do just fine. There's nothing wrong with this little guy. Yeah, okay, it's a little slower. Um, you can't do 4K60 on it, or you can do 1080, but 1080 is not the greatest, but... I mean, for social media stuff anyways, YouTube and down, it really ain't going to make that much of a difference. But I'm just kind of a camera nerd. I like the 4K60 stuff. So what do you think, guys? Like, I just wanted to say, like, I'm not trying to down any cameras. I'm not trying to hate on any cameras. I'm just saying that they're all good. Like, that's why I want multiple ones. I only need one. I don't, I don't need more than one. But... I mean, I could have a third one with this. So you're going to see, I'm just going to kind of clip back and forth between the two. So you can kind of see, I set these settings at 1 over 50 shutter speed, 50 frames per second, or 20, 24 frames per second. And we've got the 1.8 aperture on both 50 mil lenses. Now, obviously, their 50 mils are not the best lenses ever, um, but they're good. They're good enough. Like, you would be the judge, right? So, uh, and then I just, you know, met, put the met general manual settings you do if you set it up on a tripod and you were going to shoot yourself on a YouTube studio. And that's what I did. So that's what you get. r eight's a great camera. Looks good. Works great. Got no issues with it. ZV-E10 is all you really need. This guy right here, I'm telling you, for the price, you can't beat it. Like, even the Canon uh, R10, the, it's just... It's a good camera. I had that one, but it's it, it's got better display. Uh, it's got a viewfinder. It's got all those things. Like if you want photography and you use the viewfinder a lot, that's one thing. But I really don't. But still, bang for buck, this ZVE10, man, you can get it uh, used, uh, 100 bucks off. You can get this thing for, you know, 500, a little over 500 bucks, five, 600 bucks. Uh, slap a lens on there, under a thousand bucks, you are good to go, right? You are good to go with this bad boy right here. This camera, this little bugger right here, it will not let you down, okay? It will not let you down. But if you're going to be moving around and uh, things like that, the rolling shutter is really bad on it. So if you're going to do a lot of panning, but I don't. I don't do that, so it don't matter. And if you want, you can use Catalyst Browse, which is a little pain for some people if you don't have a decent computer. But for me, it's not an issue. I mean, I can use Catalyst Browse, and it'd be a great vlogging camera, but you have to use Catalyst Browse. The people, people say, oh, the active stabilization on this is... Oh, no, it's not, okay? The the stabilization on the ZV-10 is crap, okay? I'm telling you right now. You don't want to use it. It ain't going to work good for you. But if you run it through Catalyst Browse, it works great, right? Our, the R8, that's dynamic stabilization is awesome, right? Um... I'll throw up a little video right now, and you can see the stabilization of the Canon R8 when you're walking. I mean, it is like it is just like the dynamic 
uh, on the dy dynamic active stab on the ZVE-1. ZVE-1 dynamic active stabilization is amazing too, but so is the digital stab on the R8. It really is with a 16 millimeter, best full frame vlogging setup for the price. It just is. So anyway, um, A7C2, I love that camera too. You know, I had the A7 IV, it's a great sensor. Um, I just, the ZVE-1 does a little more for me, but I, I love that A7C2. That's a great camera. I mean, for most people, that's all more than anyone's going to ever need. And it's uh, it's going to be better for photography, right? It does have more megapixels, even though this thing does work good for that, but it's got more megapixels. And it has a viewfinder. So obviously, if you do any kind of photography, just get this A7C2. But if you're not going to do any photography, you know, you can go for the, save your money on the ZV-1 even, and go for the Canon R8. I mean, the Canon R8 is an amazing value for the price. It really is. you got the R62 sensor in there. I know I said that um, multiple times, but, you know, so which one would I recommend? Which camera of these three do I recommend? Well... It's pretty easy. If you're on a budget, less than a thousand bucks, you want to uh, roll with ZVE10. Get yourself a, a good lens for it. Um, if you know you're going to move up to full frame, you can buy a full frame lens and put it on here. So at least that way, when you go full frame, you will be good uh, to just get the camera, and then you'll already have lenses made specifically for that camera. But if you are just, you know, I, I'm not even worried about that. I just want to get in it. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna be happy with the crop factor, the APS-C. Then go go with that. That's fine. And you can always upgrade to like the 6700. But um, you run the risk of you know, hey, whoops, I bought a bunch of APS-C lenses. Now I want to move to full frame. Now I gotta buy all new full frame lenses. But you'll have a B cam with extra lenses, so you're not totally out, right? So as you grow, you get a couple good lenses, which are a little cheaper, right? You get a 56 mil, the Sigma Trio. Enough said. I mean, you got those, you got all you need. Start out with a 16 mil or whatever. There's so many lenses. All right, guys, there's so many lenses. If you're looking about, you know, the $1,500 range, get the Canon R8. You can buy it uh, on sale sometimes, 100 uh, bucks or more off. Used, uh, get a 35 millimeter on it or a 50 mil for uh, less than 200 bucks. You're talking, if you do that, you're probably around 1,600, 1,700 tops. And you got yourself this, a setup, okay? The 35 mil is going to cost you a little more on that R8, but it'll get you it'll get you going. It'll get you hooked up, and you've got yourself. You get the 16 mil on here. You got yourself a vlogging setup. So you're vlogging and your YouTube setup for a couple grand. ZVE one is overpriced, guys. It really is. All right, 2200 bucks. I paid 18. You slap a 400 dollars lens on it. Now you're at 2200, 23, 24. So it also all depends on you. You're not going to notice the video quality that much but you can use like a Cinetone in that on the Sony ZV-E1 which I do love that I just like the picture quality that comes out of it and the way it works it's just kind of easier for me and my workflow but that's me but all three are good the A7C is good it's, uh, I, I wanted I want the uh, S5 II I want to try that one and I want to try the A7C II even though I've already used that sensor and it's a good sensor so I just want to let you know I, I love all these cameras they're fun this is my hobby this is what I like to do and that's my recommendations. On a budget, you can't go wrong with ZV-E1, right? And then you can upgrade to 6700, or you can upgrade to like the ZV-E1 or the, you know, but you got it. It's ecosystem. Which one you want to get into? A lot more lenses on the Sony. But if you only need the basic lenses, 35, 16, the 50s, maybe a halfway decent zoom lens, like a 24 to 105, then you can go with the Canon. But if you want to really get more options, more choices, third party, you got to go with Sony. And that's why I chose to go with a little more on the Sony end. But there it is, guys. There's my recommendations. Some of you have asked for that. And that's my recommendation. Um, the Panasonic S5 is good, too. The uh, Mark II is good. Uh, I have seen no problems with that one. Uh, the autofocus isn't quite as good. Uh, lenses are good. You get deal, good deals on their lenses, too. So, but that is that the system you want to buy into? I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. It's got good video qualities. You're not going to go wrong with that one either. You really aren't. So whatever one you choose, choose what works for you. I, I, I suggest start out with something like the ZV-E10. Like if, you, if you're if you on a budget and you're just starting out, 
but you gotta get a lens for it, guys. That kit lens is good, but it's if you're running YouTube and you want that background separation, right? This is the 50 mil, right? You, you're this is at 1.8. So you, the kit lens, I was very disappointed with this at first because I was like, the kit lens is good, but man, for indoors and the, the YouTube studio, you need a lot of lighting because you're at like, you know, if you put it at 50 mil, right? You need like 5.6. You need a lot of lighting at that. Right, there's a difference between big difference between 1.8 aperture and 5.6. So, if you, if you, I'm telling you, if you buy one of these, you got to put it in your mind. I got to buy. You can use kit lens for a little bit, but you're not you're going to be disappointed compared to what you see other people putting up on YouTube and what you're going to get. You got to put a 1.4 on this bad boy. You do that, 1.8, 1.4 on this thing, you're going to be good. You're going to be like, okay, there it is, there it is. All right, but if you don't, if you're only going to buy this with a kit lens, and that's all you plan on doing, you're going to, you have to put it in your mind. You got to buy a lens for it. I'm just being honest, okay? Because that's where it's going to come. That's where it's going to go. All right, you're not going to just stick with a kit lens and be happy. Guys, this is not going to happen, okay? Not if you're really going to get serious and want to move up. You just, not to say you can't take good photos, good videos and stuff with it. It's just, trust me. Okay, I went through this. Trust me. Most YouTubers would agree with me, I'm sure, uh, that have success um, and are in the camera space. But if you're willing to go 1,000 or less total, or ZV-10, it's a good choice. Just got to get the lenses. Uh, full frame, you can get by a little more because the depth of field is, you know, the kit lens you can get by with it a little more because you don't need as much light. You know, it's better in light. You can raise the ISO to 1600 and still be good, right? So, but it's up to you. If you got 100 ISO on this bad boy with a 1.4, 1.8, it's going to look great. You, you you almost won't be able to tell them apart virtually. Side by side on social media, you won't be able to tell them apart. So don't let people tell you that these things, the crop sensors aren't good anymore. That's not the case. You just got to have a little more light. Uh, other than that, they're good. All right, guys. Hope you uh, got a little something out of this. Just wanted to throw this up at you and uh, want to do the A cam, B cam thing. And just uh, I'm growing in this and I'm experimenting and having fun with it myself. I uh, wanted to try the B cam thing out. Maybe eventually I'll put three up and just for uh, giggles and let it let it roll. So and uh, go three cameras. And but I uh, wanted to do the A, B, A, A cam, B cam, and uh, you can kind of see what the uh, Canon. Uh, looks like and then you can see what from that angle there and you can see what the ZVE one looks like and you can be the judge for yourself If you want me to do the ABC cam with this as well, so you can go all you know look at all three I'd be more than happy to do that. Just let me know in the comments below guys What camera is good for you? What's gonna work good for your flow and your budget and all that remember if you do start with whatever you start with like if you start with the the R10 uh, you can move up to the R8 so you, ha you, you have upgrade options either way but Canon APS-C lenses are not there. So I'm just, you got to adapt them, pain in the butt. If you're going to start with APS-C, I would go with Sony. All right, guys. Just want to let you throw that out there. Don't want to forget. All right. Take care. Uh, leave your comments below. What camera works best for you? What's, what works good in your workflow? You let me know. All right, guys. We will talk to you later. Have a great day.